Welcome to another session of Informally Formal. Our today's topic is capacity development. The need for capacity development of its uh, human capital and its institutions can hardly be overstated. To talk about this very important subject, we have with us today the managing director of a large engineering company in Bangladesh, Energy Pack, Mr. Humayun Rashid. Thank you for having me. Absolutely, it's a pleasure. Um, uh, Humayun, uh, we, uh, we know that you uh, had a very large organization, an engineering company, where um, between all the different companies that you, uh, that you had, uh, you employ about uh, 10,000 people. You would be a terrific person for our today's session, which is capacity development. Humayun, so let me just go straight into my first question. Is uh, in terms of uh, human capital development, what do you see in terms of uh, what do we need to do to create future job opportunities in uh, Bangladesh? Thank you, Akbar. The future is human capital. Without human capitals, no country can grow. Knowledge-based innovations, all these are very focused in our organizations. And in the job market, we are primarily, there is one thing we find the absent is passion. You have to have passion. For if you want to read the engineering, you have to have, or have passion on the engineering, on the innovations, on creativity. Without this, you cannot create anything so that people are going to schools, they are studying for to make their parents or make their families or make the society happy. But the, on the reality, human capital build up is absent. So this is the big challenge when we bring these kids the brilliant kids in the organizations. We have to spend too much time to create their passions, to teach them how to innovate, how to create ideas, how to understand the international standards. Well, man, you're, what you're basically saying is uh, uh, today's kids, when they come out of institutions, they lack passion. Is that what you're basically saying? I don't want to blame the education system. I want to blame the whole chain. We are more focused on only books. We are measured with the result of our study. The reason why someone is not passionate is because what they really want to study is not what they end up studying. Back in the days, uh, there was overemphasis on engineering and medicine. Now there is an overemphasis on BBAs and MBAs. You uh, run a, ra a rather large organization. So what do you see in terms of when uh, graduates come in? Um, what do you see lacking in them besides passion? The education system is uh, more focused on theory based. Academia and the industry have a lot of gaps. This practical uh, uh, linkage is absent between the industry and, and the institutions. If I hear you correctly, what you're really saying is there is a mismatch between the need of the industries and what the educational institutions are uh, producing, one. And the other one that you mentioned is uh, perhaps there needs to be a lot more internship, uh, extended internship, so uh, students get to have some uh, practical experience, hands-on practical experience. Today is not tomorrow. Our education system, our society, our passion, everything for tomorrow. So if we can understand what is need for tomorrow for our we can give a guideline to our future generations. Where do you think, what skill sets are needed for the future? There is a large number of population is below 30, 25, 30, which is about 60, 67% populations. We need to create jobs for them. So what type of job they need? If they want to get a job in the future market, 
they have to have the skill, what type of skill they can have. I'm, I'm in the electrical business, for example, I can give you example on the electrical line systems. There is a medium voltage, high voltage, and low voltage. You can create the skill people for the three segments on the electrical engineering. You do not need, to, you don't need to send, send your kids to, for the BBA or MBA, the high school dropout kids can go and learn low voltage or medium voltage or high voltage technicians and work in Bangladesh or overseas anywhere. There's a fantastically big opportunities. Where are For they example, gonna, if you see, where are they going to learn these skills? This is the, there's a lot of schools in Bangladesh. There is a lot of vocational training schools in Bangladesh. These are like clinic where you cannot get the proper treatments. These are not hospital. We need hospitals for proper treatment, for proper diagnostics. So that we need proper vocational institute. Endorsed, certified, and those certifications have the global acceptability. And the kids after graduations from vocational schools they can get a job anywhere in the world. This is a certifications, qualifications the kids will have and will get a job in Botswana, in Bolivia, in Bangladesh, anywhere. So that we have to standardize our education systems for the skill development. So that in the electrical engineering sectors, we do not need the engineers. We need more technicians than more engineers. I don't think that there's qualified technique, vocational institutes where the kids can go and learn now. Not everyone needs to go become a graduate engineer. We have a large population um, uh, that is um, a young population that needs, for the most part, technical education. The government is uh, paying quite a bit of attention to, to this um, these days. As a matter of fact, under the PMO, there is a National Skills Development Authority. And uh, so the government is paying a lot of attention to uh, what we are talking about. Because you see, without proper um, uh, capacity development, Humayun, without proper capacity development, we will forever stay dependent on others. If we could properly upgrade the skills of our workers, instead of sending unskilled workers, I guess that's what you're saying, not just in the electrical side, there's lots of other areas. In the hospitality industry, for example, nursing has a tremendous need uh, everywhere. Uh, moving on, uh, future industries and skills, um, what kind of future industries do you believe and what kind of skills in terms of, of course, we're talking about uh, capacity development, you know, and capacity development, as you know, Humayun has two, two sides to it. One is the uh, human capital development, and there is also the institutional, institutional capacity development also. And I very much believe that Bangladesh needs tremendous amount of institutional reform. Let's step to the future. What would you say are the skills that we uh, what kind of, where are we headed? What kind of skills, human capital skills, institutional reform, I guess is we could have another topic for another day. So let's just stick to uh, the human capital side of uh, what we're talking about today. There's a lot of things we can discuss, but one thing I want to talk about the future opportunities. What is the future of skill? Artificial intelligence is the next challenge is coming. Robotics is the next challenge is coming. So our kids need to understand it is not only ingenious, supports people also need to understand. So this is the one thing with big changes we, we are expecting in futures. Another future we are, we need to focus on skill developments. That is to support the industries. We need a lot of electrical, mechanical, skilled people. Otherwise, this IT cannot sustain. We need reliable power supply. To for the reliable power supply, we need the skilled technicians. We need to make the supply chain, global supply chain, perfectly workable. We need skilled 
forklift operators. We need good crane operators. We need good container handling uh, technicians. We need to fix that mechanical thing so that we need also mechanical, lot of mechanical skilled people. Where do you see uh, uh, the future and what kind of human capital development efforts that we need to put in place now because that, that future is coming and it's coming very fast. Those people who have the degrees, they will have the different type of skills, but those do not have the college graduations, how they are going to address, that is, is my, that's what I focused mostly. And future of opportunities for these kids, for these peoples will be more related with the artificial intelligence, robotics, what you say, everything, right? Absolutely agree with you. But you cannot ignore to give the, the support for the robotic industry, best industries, backbone of the supply chains need some sort of skills. That's what we need to address. Linkage of, this is linkage in between the whole supply chains. There is numbers of places we need to develop their skills. If you look at uh, America, uh, Humayun, um, uh, most, of their, most of their kids do not go to college, as you very well know. So, so how is it that America is one of the um, most advanced countries there is? Okay, so everyone does not need to go to college. I, I, I'm totally in agreement with you, okay. They can uh, get different kinds of vocational skills. I know tons of uh, uh, kids in America, for example, they learn coding at a very young age. So this digital Bangladesh um, uh, that uh, we are seeing unfolding, um, you know, I am pretty hopeful mm -hmm. that that's going to take this skill set of the future where a lot of the lot of the kids in um, uh, you know not just in urban but in in rural areas are gonna have access to internet, have access to computers, and learn coding or learn um, uh, you know how to how to process uh, invoices online and stuff like that. Not everyone needs to go to college. I am totally in agreement. No. With Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I understand that uh, uh, you are correct in, in the Western world. If you see in the US or if you see, I, 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 uh, I was about, uh, last year I was in a factory in, a Germ in Germany. I've seen that the young kids coming from the schools, all these kids are dropped out. They are working for two years as in turn to learn the mechanical and electrical things so that they can work on that factory or they can go to other factories to get work so that they can get a job very easily so that their skill development is coming from that side. In future, what I understand, what you was sharing, I appreciate that where is this, where's the opportunity? Bangladesh is number one in RMG. RMG technology is changing. There's a lot of automations is coming in the RMG operations in the ready-made garments sectors. In other sectors, there will be a lot of opportunities is coming. That is healthcare sectors. If you see the healthcare sectors, there's a lot of electromedical medical engineering parties required. There's a lot of technicians is required. Occupational safety is the one of the important thing where Bangladesh is mostly absent. And if we can address that, and if we know that thing, we could be world-class skilled people, and we will be acceptable in the job market. Capacity development, both in terms of, of course, we, we focused on um, uh, the human capital development, but we mentioned that, you know, of course, institutional capacity development is equally important, which I guess we're going to pick up um, another day. Uh, but human capital, um, we have a large population that is under 35, as you mentioned, 65% of our population is under 35. And um, we need to find ways of uh, educating uh, these youngsters, educating the, this uh, and take advantage of this young demographic 
uh, uh, dividend that we have. I congratulate you on your uh, tremendous success with Energy Pack and its uh, sister companies. I would leave it, uh, leave it at that with a big thank you to you for giving us your time today. And um, um, to our audience, uh, thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, with an invitation for you to join us again next week. Till then, stay safe, stay home, and I will see you next week.